Hey, what's up guys? Hey, it's Val here, and I'm back for another video already. Yeah, that's right. So I just came out with a Warframe video, as you can see, as my welcome back. And on that video, I was playing Nightblade Sin Hybrid. Now, you asked for the... What I, how I would put what the build was, a specific build, so I'm going to give it to you. Now, take in mind, this is a rough draft build. I haven't changed it to my liking yet. I still want to temper with the uh, test of things and, you know, change it around a little bit. But I'm going to give you what I was running in that Warfront. Now, break it down for Nightblade. I was running 5 out of 5 in Burning Rage, 5 out of 5 in Blazing Fury, 1 out of 1 in Twilight Force, 3 out of 3 in Primal Death, um, Grab Flame Thrust, Glad, uh, Grab Advanced State of Sloth, um, you want 1 out of 3 in Fire and Death Attunement, Grab Dark Malady, 3 out of 3 in Lingering Flame, um, 3 out of 3 in Night Stalker, 1 out of 1 in Epic Fury, 3 out of 3 in Heat Retention, 2 out of 2 in Even Tide, 1 out of 1 in Scourge of Darkness, 3 out of 3 in Enhanced Weapon Enchantments, 2 out of 2 in Kindle, 1 out of 1 in Dust to Dawn, 5 out of 5 in Blackout, finally 2 out of 2 in Ignited Weapons. As for Assassin, you're going to want to grab 1 out of one, uh, 1 out of 5 in Murder's Intent, 5 out of 5 in Ruthlessness, 5 out of 5 in Magnified Pain, 1 out of 1 in Puncture, 3 out of 3 in Cloak and Dagger, 3 out of 5 in Cruel Vengeance, 1 out of 1 in Black Stab, 3 out of 3 in Poison Potency, 1 out of 1 in Improved Stealth, 3 out of 3 in Serrated Blades, 5 out of 5 in Poison Mastery, and lastly 1 out of 1 in Slip Away. Now, the reason I grabbed um, some ways is because it's good for resetting fights, and that's why I didn't spec it into a particular uh, damage increasing move. I may, um, what I'm probably going to do though, is uh, take a point out and grab how to play, because that's more um, control that I want. Having that stun could be crucial. So, there's, like I said, there's still things I want to change around, like maybe grab during brew, there's foul play, you know, lining power. There's still things I need to look around in this build, but this is just an example of how. I'm just showing you what I was running that match. This is still a very good build. So, but yes, that is the build. Oh, and as a sub soul, you want marksman for your ranged attacks. Yes, you do have fiery spike, but it is only a 20 meter range. While <clears throat> swift shot is a 30 meter range. Now, your swift shot will be doing a lot of damage because in this build you are going to be wanting to use. Okay, first of all, you want to use the nightblade synergy crystal. All right. Um, the buffs you want to use, you don't want to use any of the Nightblade buffs, you just want to use the poisons, your Verlin poison, and lethal poison. So as you can see on your Swiss shot, you're going to be having your poison procs. As you can see, the poisons are procking. Now, the other reason it will be doing a lot of damage is because you will be having Scourge of Darkness up most of the time. Now, when you shoot your ranged shot, as you can see, Scourge of Darkness is procking, so you're going to be having that extra damage off. So as you can see, your Swiss shot will be doing a lot of damage, so don't take it lightly as well as giving you a speed boost when you're trying to catch up to the enemy. You will also get, as always, on the devil from the sub -soul. Alright, so now how to play the build. Okay, so there's a lot of things about this build, but it's really simple. Don't worry about it. Um, I didn't make any macros. I didn't think about that right now, but I will just break, I can just give you some macros here, I'll put them in, I'll put a, some macros in the description, I'll make it for this build to make it a little easier for people, but for the people who don't want to use macros, we work better, follow what I'm using right now, okay? So, here's how you're going to play the build, you're going to be having the abilities, there's a lot more abilities in this one, take care of, so you're going to be having, let's see, okay, so you have stealth, obviously, and the ability you always want to open up with is Dark Malady because you're going to be getting that 20% increase in damage and if you can remember you have Cloak and Dagger so after using any from stealth attack you deal 15% more damage and take 15% less damage for 15 seconds. Alright, so just lost it. Yeah, so you want to open with Dark Malady and aside from that you're also going to be having Lost Hope so you have a range sap which is amazing. So you can CC people like that. Um, you can choose to open with some other if you want to silence for five seconds. It's up to you. It's all situational. So I would choose between Dark Malady and Smother. Um, I wouldn't suggest so Hug and Tear, but these two are great. As for abilities, you're going to want to have Twilight Force up most of the time because you get State of the Sloth as well as the increased damage from Advanced State of the Sloth, which is a 10% increase. So try to keep Twilight Force up at all times. As you can see right there, that's what the ability looks like. 
The other ability you want to keep up, make sure you have it when it's on CD, is Dust to Dawn. It has a 30 second CD and it deals a dot over 4 seconds. Now the benefit to this is it increases damage done by Blazing Strike and Flame Thrust by 20%. So that's why you want to keep it up because your, your finishers will be getting a huge boost from that. Alright, so the finishers you want to worry about are these three. So you want to have Scourge of Darkness up so your, your weapon attacks will deal death damage for combo points. So you always want to use it at 5, don't use it in at any other time. Um, as for finishers, self-explanatory, melee, use Blazing Strike, um, range, you'll use Flame Thrust. Simple as that. Now you have three combat buffs you need to worry about. Four is TT, Twilight Twin Ascendants, which is your big defensive buff. Um, self-explanatory again, just use it when you're about to die or when you, you know. So what it does, it reduces damage taken by 50%, and but it reduces your damage by 40%. Um, it'll also restore 50% of your maximum health over 4 seconds, so as well as remove curses, diseases, and poisons. So, that's your defensive buff. Use it wisely, because it's on a 2 minute cooldown, so it sucks. Um, one of your, these are two bursting buffs. Um, you have Touch of Darkness, which does a lot of damage. So for the next 6 seconds, we'll melee attacks, deal an additional 975 death damage, and drain 5 energy or 5 power, or 3% of the enemy's maximum mana. So that's a good ability to have on when you want to, um, you're putting pressure on a healer or any caster, really. And it's great burst, as you can see here. I'll show you an example. So when we put on uh, Scourge of Darkness, if I pop this, as you can see, my abilities are doing Touch of Darkness, as you can see. Uh, you can see it proccing, but let's see. See the damage right there, Touch of Darkness right there. So it's a good ability to have for extra burst and extra damage. Your other ability is Evan Fury. So you have the ability Dust Strike, and I've gone over this in my Nightblade Guide. I don't know if you have seen this, so you know how the ability works. Um, as your damage goes, it has a it can stack up to five times, and it um, each stack will increase its damage by 10%, but maximum five, but as well as reduce or increase the cost by 15% per stack. Heaven Fury just makes it so it doesn't cost anything, and as well as Dust Strike, or yeah, Dust Strike, or oh, Twilight Force. Sorry, um, but it'll make um your the main bill you wouldn't worry about is the um, Dust Strike because you're going to be able to spam it at. Um, Five stacks, so it has a 50% increase. So that is a um, good ability to be using. You want to time that in with uh, even when even when Evan Fury is up, you want to time it in with your fiery spikes. So it's something you'll get used to. There's no really rotation for it. So. All right, that's really the uh, Nightblade abilities. Obviously, you want to keep fiery spike up. Um, I like to use fiery chains every now and then when you're in a big group of people, because if you just shoot one off, like say I'm at um, here, let me pop Scourge. Don't do that for like. Anyway, so as you see, it'll gain if I pop Fire Chains. See, it gives you. I can max out my combo points by doing that. So it's just a quick way to get a finisher off. So that's really useful to use. Um, Weapon Flare. You can use that if you're trying to AOE, put pressure. In, really. So those are the abilities you need to worry about. Now, Assassin. This is what you're getting added onto. Obviously you have the ability slip away, which um, you'll just use when you want to reset a fight, get away, etc. Um, now uh, add it on with your fiery spike and dust strike, you're going to be wanting to use backstab when possible on cooldown, as well as puncture, you want to keep that bleed up. Um, here I'll show you what puncture looks like. Uh, so as you can see it puts a bleed on them, so you want to try and keep that up. Um, as well as use backstab when you're behind the target. As you can see. Yeah, we can pop out right there. Right there. So you want to use backstab when possible. You don't. You're not going to be using savage strike, so ignore that. Ignore final blow. Um, impale. That's situational. Use it when you see things fit, like on a tanky person, on a when they're at full health. Don't use it when they're. I, I wouldn't suggest using it when they're about halfway or something, because. Um, so you're able to take them back. It's, it's not worth it. It's a loss in damage, really, because it's a 20-second bleed. So I wouldn't suggest it at those times. Um, I already told you the poisons, virulent and lethal. And the debuff you're going to be wanting to use is, is exposed weakness. So you're going to want to keep this uh, up. It's increased.
increase the damage taken from the rogue by 6% for 20 seconds. Does not break stuff. So that's always nice to have on the target. So, oh, you're also gonna have a looseness. Didn't bring that up. Uh, that's really it for the build. It's that simple. Um, I'll show you. I guess I can show you what it looks like. There's oh, god. I had auto attack on. Damn it. What I don't like about this game is the, how you have to lose combat. It gets annoying sometimes. Alright. So you open up with Dark Malady. So you. <clears throat> you want to get your Twilight Force up. Well, you can't really see it, but. You know. Have your bleeds up. You know, you're going to be wanting to pop the Dust Strike. That's really how you play the build. So it's really simple. Um. And since you're in melee, I didn't bring this up. The a lot of dots that you're going to be having added on, you're going to be having ignited weapons as well. It's not uh, yeah, you're going to be ignited weapons and serrated blades, as you can see here. Let me let me get up behind this guy. So as you can see, it pops serrated blades. You can see. Uh, let's see if I can get. And when you pop uh, blazing strike or flame thrust, you're going to be getting ignited weapons on this. So that's another thing. But serrated blades is a bleed that's probably always going to be on the target. As you can see, yeah, that's how you play the build. It's as simple as that. So if you found anything confusing, guys, let me know, and uh, I'll let you know. Uh, I'll try and clear it up with you. All right. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed.